In the previous video, we talked about how positive feedback plays a relationship with homeostasis. And the way it does that is that it alters homeostasis for one beneficial reason, and that is to amplify the initial change. Unlike negative feedback, in which it inhibits the initial change, positive feedback has one goal in mind, and that is to enhance the original stimulus. And it does that because it wants to drive the physiological values away from a set point. So a prime example of this can be seen in labor. When the baby is inside the mother's uterus, there becomes a stretch. At the end of labor, of course. And the head of the baby stretches the cervix of the mother's uterus, and that initiates nerve impulse. And this nerve impulse gets sent to the hypothalamus. And when it reaches the hypothalamus, it signals the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin. And in response to that, oxytocin is released. and it travels in the blood to the muscles of the uterus. And when it reaches the uterus, it responds to the oxytocin and the contractions become more vigorous. And that's beneficial because the child needs to be pushed out of the cervix. And then the uterine contractions also will create dilation of the cervix, which stimulates further release of, of oxytocin. And you may then ask, well, how is this stopped? And it becomes stopped when birth takes place. So the stretching of the cervix lessens and the feedback cycle is broken. And when the feedback cycle is broken, you have the birth of a new child. So let's summarize this. We have contractions that take place and these contractions play a positive feedback on the hypothalamus to release oxytocin. And in response to the release of oxytocin, it generates more contractions, having this positive feedback on the uterus. And when the oxytocin is released, causing more contractions, the contractions will then further amplify the release of more oxytocin.
And that's beneficial because we need the oxytocin to create the contractions to release the baby out in the external environment. And this can be seen as an ampl amplification of the initial signal, which positive feedback encapsulates. So let's recap here. In positive feedback, we have the amplification of the initial change. And it drives the physiological values away from a set point. So we increase more oxytocin. And as we increase more oxytocin, we increase contractions. And we did this because we needed to have the birth of the child. And it becomes established once we create an environment that increases oxytocin, which will further increase contractions, which will eventually deliver the child.